here we are for another session. This time we're going to be getting into uh, the fake moon landing conspiracy. Mr. Bart Sabrell, he is literally the moon man. It's his book. He's responsible for uh, a couple movies. Funny thing happened on the way to the moon. And uh, Astronauts Gone Wild, that's when Buzz Aldrin punched him. So you guys might know him from that. But we pulled it out of him, right? I mean, uh, you guys are going to hear in this that he got kind of emotional at the end, right, Tom? Yeah, you guys will hear it from himself. He said it might be the best interview he's ever given. And uh, that's an honor for us. And yeah, you guys might know him from the videos of trying to get astronauts to swear that they walked on the moon over the Bible. And uh, he's been assaulted by Edgar Mitchell and Buzz Aldrin. So this was a epic session. You guys will definitely love to hear what he has to say. I hope you enjoy the conversation we had with Bart Sabrell. Sabrell.com. Bart, I'm a fan. I've read your book. I've watched, uh, you know, all your documentaries. And my co-host is Tom. He is a uh, a combat sports world champion, and we're just two friends that uh, have been uh, lifelong truth seekers, uh, conspiracy theorists, if you will. Yeah, this podcast is more about just conspiracies. We talk about everything, but one of the things we did want to talk about early on was the moon landing, and you can't talk about that without talking about the moon man, Mr. Bart Sabrell. You know, you don't know how guys, how many people interview me and they don't uh, read my book. I was on Glenn Beck a while back and he didn't read the book. And when I say, well, what about this video in the book? Oh, it's not true. Have you seen the video? Well, no. (laughs) Oh my. So, so you're on the list. Uh, It's kind of short of people who actually read my book before interviewing me. There's one other guy and you. (laughs) Awesome. I'll take it. Yeah. You know, I've read it and I've listened to it. I've listened to it twice too. So. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely a fan. I was just telling Tom how, man, in the book he goes in, he talks about how they had him at a mental institution, how they had plants in there. This lady was watching him, and and, and these people came, and they were, like, trying to be on his side. And I, I'm trying to explain, like, you know, the whole story, and it's just it's so crazy. Yeah, fortunately, I got a good memory for detail. In fact, I, when you said that, I know exactly what she looks like, at least back then. I mean, I can, I can you know, if I were an artist, I could draw you exactly what she looked like to this day and her and her uh, assistant who was older than her in the wheelchair (laughs) (laughs) man that's incredible so for people who don't know who you are you are the moon man you're bart sabrell you're the guy that buzz aldrin slapped people probably know you from that he didn't slap me he punched me he he did punch a girl how much power did he have in that right hand bart he had, he had a lot and he was quick because i didn't see it coming for number one and if you look at the video i'm i'm going back on one foot you know and then i've had i had like a toothache in that tooth for like 10 years to tell you the truth so here's the thing when he punched me you know sinful bart i'm thinking oh okay i'm gonna i'm gonna sue him i got it on camera he assaulted me and uh i'm gonna buy my house i haven't i haven't never owned a home to this day i've always rented i said buzz is gonna buy me a house with that <laughs> and then little old me Little old me, I try to be a Christian. People ask me, are you a Christian? I say, I don't say yes. And I don't dare wear, ever wear a cross around my neck. But I say, I try. And then because I read the Bible more than once, cover to cover, a scripture pops into my head. Get this. When someone strikes you on one side of the cheek, you're to not take offense and offer them the other side. And I go, darn, I almost got a house out of this. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I chose to obey God and not sue him. So anyway. <laughs> Gotta say, it is a legendary uh, claim to fame to have uh, been the one to upset him to that degree, though. I think a lot of people out there have yeah, seen the well, video, even if they haven't read the book. They know of you from that video. Yeah, you know, I was just talking to somebody before this, and I was telling them a story. Basically, the punch video, if you go to sabrell.com, S as in Sam, I, B as in boy, R, E, L, the book, Moon Man, which, as you said, it's in audio. I read it myself, Kindle and print. It's interactive. There are 16, now 17, video clips. So I basically write a chapter and say, look, I'm about to talk about the film, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. So before uh, I go any further, stop, watch it, come back. And I do that 16 times in the book. And so one of the clips, of course, is Astronauts Gone Wild with the punch. Well, if you go to sabrell.com, and scroll down to click on Bart's YouTube channel, it takes you to YouTube, scroll down to the bottom playlist, it's the links of the book, you know, MM, Moon Man, Link 1, Link 2, so forth. So I have somewhere on my website, it's either that, you know, that version or something, just, just the punch, you know, to satisfy people who want to see it. So 
I have 60,000 subscribers. The clip has been up there for 10 years, okay? And it's got, because they throttle it, 450,000 views. And then a couple of years ago, this, you know, how dare you say we didn't go to the moon, you blasphemous traitor. And he uploads the video on his We Really Went to the Moon and Bart's an Idiot channel, which only has 200 subscribers, okay? And the same video that he took from my channel gets 2 million views in 30 days. He gets 2 million views in 30 days, which is four to $16,000 of ad revenue he stole from me on a channel with 200 subscribers in 30 days. I have 60,000, it's been up there 10 years, and I only have 450,000. So what's the difference? I say, and it's unfortunately true, they think going to the moon. He says, no, 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 Bart's an idiot, we really went. But if I dare segue into who's the idiot or who's not, and I'm glad to admit that I am, if I am, <laughs> I gather you want to talk about the, the latest revelation about the AI, right? Oh, yeah, let's go. Okay, so let's go because that kind of segue into it. So here's the thing. I've been working on this, and I could tell the story. I was asleep when it happened. I got the packet of Apollo pictures, put them on the wall. It became my god, the glorious moon landings. No matter where we moved, there was my shrine. From age 4 to 14, saw them 3,650 times at least, thinking they went to the moon. I'm 14. See a guy on TV, says, no, I worked there, it was fake. I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. Open-minded 14-year-old, go look at the pictures, and all of a sudden, I noticed that in the original, they kind of corrected it, the soil's brown, the background's grayish blue. And there's a straight line, horizontal, left to right, in all the pictures, where the real soil ends and the fake backdrop begins. I think, huh, that's kind of interesting. Ten years after that, I become a filmmaker. I'm editing one day for the guy who produced the show I saw as a 14-year-old. I'm like, who's that guy who said we didn't go to the moon? He says, how can I remember that? Call the production office in San Francisco. I call and I say, Mr. Sabrell, had you called a day later, we wouldn't be able to tell you because we throw away files every 10 years to make room for more stuff. So I track him down. He says, make the movie. I study it for six months, and I turn it down. I'm like, look, I have a relentless personality. If you see the follow-up at sabrell.com, Astronauts Gone Wild with Punch, I'm one of those people who never quits. In fact, sometimes I pray to God. He talks to me kind of in my thoughts. And one day when I'm probably throwing up because I drink too much, I said, God, why do you put up with me? I buy booze. I throw up. I throw away the booze. And I go back and buy more booze. And I do it over and over again. Why do you put up with that? I mean, I would smite me. I mean, <laughs> what are you thinking? And he says, Bart, the reason I don't smite you is because you're that type of guy who falls off the horse a million times and always gets back on. And knowing that about myself, and also knowing that I like puzzles, I could draw mazes in the fourth grade that adults couldn't do. And I could pick up another maze book, and I don't know, some savant, I can like see this big maze where the opening is the first time. And I just draw my pencil through it hardly with any error and go all the way through. Now, how I do that, I don't know, but I love puzzles. And I'm relentless. And I said, with that combination, if anybody could figure out whether we went to the moon or not, it would be me. And then I think, well, if they didn't go and I start overturning these rocks, hmm, that might be hazardous to my health. And I'm like in my you know, mid-20s and I'm thinking, I want to have a wife and family. Do I really want to risk my life for Richard Nixon? I don't think so. <laughs> so I turned down the project. Another client a couple of years later, or maybe, I don't remember exactly, but short, shortly after that sometime, there's some famous, quote, Christian musician. They know I'm this aspiring filmmaker. The ultimate goal is, you know, feature film. Hey, I'll get your feature film script to this famous producer that I know out in Hollywood. If you do me a favor, I'm like, uh, I'll get the towel now and wash your feet. What is it? They said, I want you to read the Bible. I'm like, oh, I, I got one over there somewhere. They got the encyclopedia, the thesaurus and the Bible in case I need to look it up right next to the encyclopedia. And I said, no, no, don't use that one. Go out and buy a one-year Bible that divides the entire Bible into 365 reads, you know, January 1, so forth. I started June 3rd, 1989, the day that the guy stood in front of the tanks in China, risking his life to stop other people being killed. That's the day I started reading the Bible. And over the next five years, I read it five times from cover to cover. Now, I wasn't Christian by any means, but it did convince me of there is right and wrong. I mean, come on, raping somebody is wrong. Stealing their property is wrong, right? And it just makes sense that there's a judgment. 
you know, you, you, you take a test, you get the result. Life is a test, you get the result. And then it dawns on me, Mike and Tom, if they did not go to the moon, if that's true, not going and faking it, embezzling $200 billion and murdering Americans to cover it up, that's more profound historically than if they'd actually gone. Do you see that? Faking the moon landing, if that's true, is so much more profound historically than if they'd actually gone. And I said, if that's true, this is important. The public is being robbed of this important truth like a cure for cancer. How can you cure cancer if you don't even know that you have it? And I said, it is worth dying for. I said, I'm gonna die anyway, and I might as well go out in a blaze of glory. And a day or so after that, I meet a millionaire who's building rockets for NASA, who knows the moon landings are fake, who gives me a million dollars to make this movie. He wishes to remain anonymous so that his stock doesn't go down. So I make the movie seven years under the possibility that they fake the moon mission. And three and a half years into the seven year project, halfway through the tribulation, I pop in a tape, it says, don't show to the public. And I'm thinking, oh, this should be good. But hit fast forward, and it's the same shot kind of bobbling around. It's like, you know, I guess it's supposed to be the Earth floating in space, but it's the behind the scenes outtakes. You know, it's the raw footage. I asked for raw footage, didn't get any, except this and one other tape. Bill Casey, the original whistleblower, says someone from NASA sent it to me intentionally. So I'm like, well, I don't understand this. Let me just rewind hit play and the very first thing it's like imagine most of your tv screen black and there's a little tennis ball sized blue earth go to sabrell.com you can see the movie on the home page for free and it's supposed to be the blackness of space with a little blue earth far away because allegedly as they claim the lens that they have of the video camera is pushed up against that glass to shoot the earth far away which it would have to be well the lights come up and the camera's actually at the back of the spacecraft and what they've done, and they talk about it all because they thought this part would be edited out, they turn out all the lights. And several feet in front of the camera is a circular window outside of which is completely filled with the Earth and Earth orbit. But it looks like, with black around it, that that's the entire Earth floating in space. And then there's a third track of audio. At the beginning, it says something like, and maybe you can insert this in, to something like, Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, Gulf Dome says that the TV looks so great. Over. Uh, Apollo 11, this is Houston, Goldstone says the TV picture looks great. NASA isn't even getting the image, see, until it's edited and sent to them. But I got the raw footage. And then you hear dead air for four seconds. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, and then you hear a third channel that's a different EQ. I mean, it's not like this walkie-talkie sound of NASA or the astronauts. And that third channel, crystal clear, says, talk. talk. And then Neil Armstrong speaks. I'm thinking, well, who is this talk? And I realized, and I didn't actually put it correctly in the film, but they're, they're faking a four-second radio delay because they're in Earth orbit, and they're supposed to be halfway to the moon, where it would take two seconds out and two seconds back. I watch people watch that part in the film, which is on the homepage for free at sabrell.com, and the, every time the audience gasped, oh, 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 when the lights come up and it's a one-foot model of the Earth, dated two days after they left, and they're claiming they're halfway to the moon when they're clearly in Earth orbit. And as I'm watching this back in 1999, I'm like, what just happened? I mean, let, let me, that's the window. They're faking being halfway to the moon. So what does that mean? I want to make sure I get this correct. If they're faking being halfway to the moon, it's because they can't go halfway to the moon. And if they can't go halfway to the moon, they can't go to the moon. And here we are 54 years later, and they still cannot leave Earth orbit. That's why there's mannequins orbiting the moon. And the most obvious reason, number one, why they didn't go to the moon is right in front of everybody through logical deduction. In 1969, when all of NASA had one millionth the computing power of a cell phone, they sent people who walked on the moon ahead of schedule for the very first time in their history on the first attempt with 1960s equipment and today, with 54 years better equipment, five decades of better rockets and computers, 
they can only send astronauts one thousandth the distance to the moon. So what they're really claiming that people don't notice is that back in 1969, NASA had 1,000 times more advanced technology than they do today. Well, that's historically and scientifically impossible. It's impossible for technology to be greater in the past and in the future unless there's been an asteroid strike. And there hasn't been one since 1969. That's proof that they didn't go, you see? Second proof, shadows intersecting at nine degrees when they should be parallel. You can prove the moon landings are fake in a quarter law with that, you see? And so for me, the epiphany is that window shot. That convinced me, but other people don't get it. So something happened about, what, three or four weeks ago? And I get this email from this guy in Russia saying, oh, Bart, Bart, stop what you're doing. You got to look at this. Some reporter in Russia did this story. And so it's in Russian. He wants to translate it and send it to me. It's about how there's this international conference. You know, they're either in Vegas or San Francisco, New York. This one's in Moscow. And it's of the latest and greatest world leaders of AI technology. You know, presidents of nations are there. And, you know, the top AI people are there. And Google is there. And Google has something even above AI called a neural network. It must be like, you know, 100 AIs hooked together becoming another bigger AI. And it's not available for the public, but you know, when you're at a car show, they show you this car that can get 150 miles a gallon and runs on, I don't know, McDonald's French fries, but it never hits the market, they're just showing up. So they say, okay, it's not available for the public, but for you guys, you know, Putin and whoever else shows up, we'll let you have access to it for the three days of the conference. So they play around and one group makes it write a symphony, another group makes it paint a painting, well, the Russian team, for some reason, they decide to first feed it these pictures from the moon taken by the Chinese probes a couple of years ago. Now, mind you, this AI has a special program called Deep Fake Detector. You know, you, you put in a video of Biden, and is it him or is it a deep fake? It knows instantly. It's never been wrong ever defecting, uh, detecting a fake picture, video, or whatever. So they feed it these pictures from the Chinese probes, you know, the lunar surface, there it is, there's rocks, there's the landscape. The, the soil is brown, by the way, like in the original pictures, and the NASA pictures is gray. So they would match the fake backdrop so you wouldn't notice them, okay? And in the NASA pictures, and they started to correct it since I said this, all the rocks are just sitting there on top of the soil, like they were placed there, you know, last week, when real rocks on the moon are like sticking up and buried in sand from however many years of micrometeorites, you see? And that little another thing I noticed. And it says, ding, 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 it's correct. You know, it's real, nothing fake about it whatsoever. And then they feed it pictures from the Apollo missions. This is like four weeks ago. And it's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> And it says it's fake for this reason, fake backdrop, the footprints are fake, the astronaut is fake. It's a miniature. In order to show this huge landscape, which they couldn't do inside, they made a doll about a foot tall of an astronaut, and, and it says that's a doll. And then it says, you know, these footprints, which were apparently on the end of a, you know, a pencil with a little boot, you know, and they're like mimicking left, right, left, right, left, right. The eye says, people don't walk that way. That's an unnatural pattern. Another fake. And then the mountain is fake, and the astronaut's fake, and the footprints are fake. And so the guy sends me this in this Russian article, and he says what he did first was he just grabbed it and went to Google Translate. And he pops it into Google Translate and it refuses to translate it. Never happened in the history of Google Translate. You can pop in a script from Gilligan's Island. You can pop in a, a, an expletives, you know, 100 expletives back to back, it'll translate it. But it won't translate an article that says that the most advanced AI just discovered that the moon picture, it refuses to translate it. So he creates his own website to translate it, sends me the translation, I download it, I do a video about it, go to sabrell.com and there's a big article about it with the link on the homepage. And then as I'm doing this video two weeks ago, I'm like, well, let me just double check the information, make sure I didn't get anything wrong. And I click on the original link, nothing's there. And then I find the original Russian link that he translated from. I click on that and are you ready for this one? A big screen appears and says, if you click proceed, all of your data will be stolen and you will be associated with child pornography. What? Yes, I have a screenshot of it, which is in the video. I'm scared to click on it and I know it's BS. 
This is how desperate they are. You, you know the story about the little boy puts his finger in the dike, and then I don't even know the ending of it. I think the ending is he just stays there forever and dies of old age or something. Yeah. But imagine what would happen if he took it out. Well, first there'd be, you know, a big trickle, then kind of like a squirt, then a little bit bigger, then a little bit bigger, and then you just start to see just a little, you know, tiny pieces of concrete come apart. Then one little, you know, dime-sized rock would fall out. Then it'd become the size of a quarter, then the size of your fist, and then the wall starts cracking and crumbling. How long between the AI says the moon pictures are fake and that wall coming down, my guess is two years. You can't put the finger back in, the hole's too big already. And they're trying to suppress it. If they take my video down, it means I'm right. And they're forbidding people to translate it. They're saying, you know, these incredible warnings I've never seen in the history of my life, not to proceed, don't tell people about this. And here's something you're hearing for the first time, I'm gonna make a video about it. So as I'm like checking the stats on the video, I see something come up. Hey, would you like to promote your video? Oh, Google wants to promote my video about how Google says the moon landings are fake. Excellent. Of course, I'm not a rich person. You know, how much money you want to spend? Well, let me just give it a try first, you know. So I give them 50 bucks and to spread out over two weeks. So whatever 50 divided by 14 is, they take that amount and spend that per day. And then when that's over, it sends me a little email. You want to continue? Oh, absolutely. And I think it did bounce it up about a thousand. I think they throttled it at about 10 and then it bumps up to 11 pretty quickly. So I'm like, absolutely. Let's, let's do this again. And a couple of days after that, only like a week ago, I get this email from Google saying my entire, not the video, my entire Google account has been shut down. And the reason is they're having problems with my credit card. Well, I go to my bank online statement. There's the first $50 that went through. Here's the second $50. That went through. So I just caught them lying. There's no problem with my credit card. Why would you shut die a, guy, a guy's account even if the credit card was rejected twice? Google would try 100 times, you know what I mean? And any merchant would, you see? Mm -hmm. This has got them running scared like the window shot. The fourth proof that I'll jump ahead, we have an eyewitness. As I'm editing my book at sabrell.com, I, I put in touch with the guy who eyewitnessed them film Apollo 11 at Cannon Air Force Base, June 1st, 2nd, 3rd of 1968. As the guy's dying, fearing the judgment of God, you know, the Bible says if you confess, you're forgiven, right? So he just confesses something. He, he tells his son, he says, I'm dying, you know, maybe dead tomorrow. I killed somebody. I'm a murderer. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, who did you kill? And he said, he killed this coworker at Cannon Air Force Base in 1968. So the son is like scared and furious and he calls the military police. This is not even in my book. And the military police come from the United States Air Force. And they're like, oh, you know, before you go, tell us who you killed, you know, make sure this was, you know, under, you know, military kosher rules of killing people. And he says, well, you know, we were, we were both security guys at Cannon Air Force Base in 1968. I was the head of security. And we eyewitnessed them film the fake moon landing. And they warned us, if we tell anybody, they'll kill us and our family. He told me he thought it was morally wrong. He was going to tell a reporter. And so I killed him so he wouldn't do that. You see, that just came out. So I uploaded a video, I don't know, a year or so ago of the son telling the story. I don't think anything of it. I don't even put sabrell.com on it. I think, well, let me just put this up here. I've had it for a while. And it rocks people's world. I got Mike Adams calling me in a frantic panic. Is this real? Is this real? It's like, well, yeah. And I, 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 I realized, oh, I guess this is a big deal. <laughs> I'm so used to all this stuff. The world thinks it's a big deal. I quickly take it down to put sabrell.com on it, put it up, and the views double like every day, you know, and it's getting up there and they throttle it or whatever. This is real. They really did fake the moon landing. So, you know, the first proof, you can't have a thousand times greater technology in the past and the future. Second proof, we have this classified footage that was discovered. Third proof, go to sabrell.com, watch a three-minute video of me showing parallel shadows in sunlight and shadows intersecting an electrical light, which they do in the Apollo pictures, and that means they're fake. And then the fourth, we have a deathbed confession. And, you know, the stranger than fiction. They really did. And I think this may be it, guys. This AI thing, which is too late for them to do anything about, that they're warning people about child pornography and taking their ad accounts down for lies, it's too late. And why did, you know, when I watched Putin's reaction and go to sabrell.com, scroll down, there's an article and video in the article of him watching. 
he's obviously not surprised. The guy knows. No, they he's know. KGB. Yeah. yeah, but get this, guys. Get this. He's scared. He looks scared. I'm thinking, why would Putin? He's not surprised, obviously, but he's scared. I think he knows it's the finger out of the dike, so why is he afraid? Well, maybe the deal was you don't say anything and we'll trade wheat you know, below cost, just like in China. As soon as the moon landing fraud came out, China went from our greatest enemy to Nixon's best friend. And whoever is visited, like if Nixon went to them or they went to him, whoever makes the trip to somebody is the lesser, you see? And the person they go visit is the mightier one. So China made him submit. To China. And I know somebody right at this hour who works in the command center of the Chinese Space Agency. And he told me not that long ago, everybody there knows the moon missions are fake and they have an arrangement with NASA that NASA will secretly give them space technology in exchange for not blowing the whistle, meaning the federal government is breaking the Espionage Act by sending technology, space technology, to China in order that the moon landing fraud won't be exposed and another good reason for the truth to come out so that we won't be blackmailed by China and Russia. But maybe not only do we send them weed or do this or that, because why is it this story on RT? RT, the free voice, just like Fox News for the truth, except we cancel our most watched program. Why would they do that if they're in the if they're a business? They're not a business. They're a pseudo anti deep state. If that were true, they would never fire the guy who's bringing in more views per day than anybody else in the history of the network, which they fight because they they're in the information control business. RT is not this you know opposed to you know the American uh, you know agenda website. No, then why isn't this story on there? Because Putin is on the video watching this revelation, not mentioned a single time on RT. You see, I think they've got some video of Putin maybe having sex with a 12 year old back in 1984. And he knows if it comes out, they're going to let that go. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But I do know for most people, this this could be it. And I don't mean to talk, but lately, the last interviews I've done, it's just like I'm tired of the moon landing, them getting away with it. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. like somebody's out there killing one child, they do a story, it fades away. They kill another child, does a story, fades away. And it goes on, three children every year for 12 years. And at some point, this needs to stop. Every last interview I've done, this is like the fourth one I've done since the AI. My whole mood, you can see I'm talking and, and, and not something. I'm just fed up with this. We, ha- we have a country, go get Moon Man, okay? The second to the last chapter is NASA's greatest fear. You know what that is? If they fake the moon landing and never killed a person to do it, maybe it's the devious part in me, guys. I would kind of be, be, you know, go, good for you. They're like those guys who tunnel from the dry cleaner into the bank and get away with it. <laughs> they got the man. But not if they slit the throats of three guards who just got married and have wives and kids, you see? If they fake the moon landing and never killed anybody, good for you, good job done. But here's the thing. I had, I had access to a lot of stuff, and I, I interviewed the widow and the son of the man who was supposed to be the first man to walk on the moon, but he was killed. A few days after, he held an impromptu press conference without permission, took reporters up to the top of the rocket, and stuck a big lemon on the top and said, this moon rocket is a piece of junk. We're going nowhere. And his last words before he died when they're doing a ground test where engines aren't even being fired, they cannot get a wired intercom to work to between two buildings. And he says, guys, how are we going to go to the moon if we can't talk between two buildings right beside each other? And that guy was a whistleblower preparing papers for his congressman, his senator says, there's no way in the world we're going to go to the moon in a year and a half. It's more like 10 years at least. And when he died, his wife told me, they came into his house and removed those papers. Hi, we're from the government. We need something. Took those papers, went out, and didn't even tell her he was dead. It was either her or Bill Casey who told me that. And so she, she says they have forensic evidence that her husband's death was intentional. The Apollo 1 fire, January 27th, 1967, she says in no way was an accident. She says, I know for a fact the CIA killed him. I interview her son for three hours. 
He's a 747 pilot. I don't think he's an idiot. He says they know for a fact there was sabotage. We have the evidence. Please don't put it in your book. Save it for later. We're doing these lawsuits. We don't want that. Of course, I'm going to obey their request, of course. But here's the thing. She told me this. On January 26, 1967, Virgil Gus Grissom comes home from work and says, Hun, for some strange reason, the CIA is flashing their badges and getting access to the equipment, and they want to inspect the equipment that we're having exercise in tomorrow. I've been here for so many years, and I've never seen the CIA here. Why did they just show up today? I wonder why. Very next day, the guy's dead from faulty equipment. The man who was going to be the first man to walk on the moon would not cooperate. They hadn't asked him about the fraud yet, but they knew what his answer would be, and they can't have him blabbing it to the media that they're going to fake the moon landing, can they? You see? And so not only did they fake the moon landing, which we paid for, right? We send a third of our income or more to the District of Columbia, that tiny little dot. They're telling every governor what to do and what not to do. That tiny little dot, who are they? We're sending them a third of our income. And what do they do with it? They promise us we're going to get a moon landing out of it, and they shoot it at Cannon Air Force Base on TV and lie to everybody, lie to the newspapers, lie to everybody. They print on coins. They put it on stamps. It's in the encyclopedia. They held ticker tape parades for them. They gave them medals of honor for being such good liars. And not only that, they murdered fellow Americans who were going to expose it. And you know how they got that money to hire the CIA agents to buy the equipment that they sabotaged with? They had to buy materials. They had to buy explosives. They had to pay the salaries of the CIA. We paid for that, too. We're paying the, the District of Columbia to rob us, and we're paying them to kill our next-door neighbor astronaut who's honest because they're dishonest. That's what we paid for. And I'm just getting sick and tired of this going on and on and on, year after year after year after year. When is it going to stop? When is that child murderer going to be caught? And if you don't catch him, it's going to get worse. When someone robs a bank and gets a million, then they think, oh, let me try another and get 10 million. Oh, let me try another and get 100 million. And the moon landing fraud isn't the first thing. Back in 1964, they passed a resolution, a law. Congress passed a law to enter the Vietnam War just after Pearl Harbor, or actually, let's say it this way, just before Pearl Harbor, 90% of Americans said, we are not interested in going to that war, 90%. When has 90% of Americans agreed on anything? And the following day, Pearl Harbor, to get even, 90% are for it. And that's what the military industrial complex wanted, right? So nobody wants to get into the Vietnam War after Korea not interested. And then they say, and this isn't me coming up with this, this is Robert McNamara admitting this on his deathbed. He was defense secretary during the Vietnam War when this happened. He, he says, he, me and the CIA, the CIA, does sound familiar? The CIA, right, who killed their president, according to the dead man's own nephew, who has more access to the Kennedy assassination files than Oliver Stone, he said, we just made that up. And, it, and what they made up is some North Vietnamese ship, they reported it in the news, they said it was real, those, those evil North Vietnamese, they attacked our poor Americans from behind and killed a bunch of our guys on their ship. It enrages the Americans. Congress passes a law based on something that never happened that the CIA lied about. They entered the war that led to the death of 3 million people, and 58,220 of those were Americans. So if the government is willing to kill their own president, and that's the dead man's relative saying it, not me, if the government is willing to kill 58,220 of their own soldiers, their own defense secretary said so, then I don't think faking a television image on the moon is that big of a stretch for them. And if it weren't for people's emotional attachment to the glorious moon landings, they would see the truth. The problem is, you know, whoever shot JFK, you know, he's still dead. Whoever did 9-11, they're dead. It's just a matter of who did it and why. This is different. This is a positive lie. You know, Kennedy was killed. 9-11 did happen. This, and a complete and unnecessary fabrication. You could have just said, we're going to need more time. I think NASA has said that 10,000 times since then. They've never kept the schedule in their entire history 
except the most complicated mission of all time, they were ahead of schedule, right? They don't have a problem postponing things, as they've done with Return to the Moon 10 times, okay? And the last one was a month ago, okay? Jesus. And so, for whatever reason, they decided to do this, and they murdered people to cover it up. And if we let these bank robbers, gangsters, rob us, they say we're going to the moon, it's done in an airplane hangar at a Canada Air Force Base, and then they use our money to murder people trying to cover it up. How much longer are we going to let this go on? One second is too much. Hey, I only took half the show to rant. Your turn. No, it's it's all right, man. This is good stuff. This is why we wanted you on. When you were talking about all the different proofs, I think you got up to four four there. I know there's, there's many more. Those are uh, some of the best ones. I was thinking a while ago about this. To the best of my knowledge, I haven't heard anybody really bring this up, so I wanted to present it to you. Supposedly, we have technology, like satellites that can see all the way, like read a credit card from space. And we have telescopes here on terrestrial Earth that can supposedly see rocks on Mars. So how come we don't have a telescope that can see a flag? They can never find the flag yeah. that's supposed to be on the moon. Yeah, Google satellites are up at approximately 26,000 miles, and they can, you know, read a license plate. NASA is supposed to have better technology than them. They have a lunar probe in orbit that's only 60 miles above the moon, not, you know, 26,000. And it can't, all you get is a little, a little shadow, which they claim is the lunar lander. And people say that's proof. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me the people who faked full body pictures shot at Cannon Air Force Base, crystal clear, printed on Life magazine, those same people you're trusting that these shadows are additional proof? Really? I mean, you're saying this this murderer is supplying his own evidence that he didn't do it? Oh, that's really good evidence for me. I mean, people would twist and turn. Mike and Tom, this is the most astonishing thing. You read it in the book. When all this started coming out, I had the window shot. I had the shadows intersecting, right? I, I show all that or I talk to a college professor at a major university. You would recognize the name, teaching aerospace. And I, I show him all this stuff or I tell him all this stuff. And he's like, Bart, 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 you might as well just give up. There's nothing you could say, nothing that will make me recant the glorious moon landings. And then I say, well, what about this? What if you saw Neil Armstrong on national TV holding a press conference and the room is silent and he's tearfully confessing, I'm sorry, the moon missions were fake. We shot them at Cannon Air Force Base June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1968. I'm so sorry. I can't live with this anymore. Please forgive me. And he walks away. I said, what if he saw that? And the college professor said, I still think he walked on the moon anyway. Unreal. Cognitive dissonance, right? 100%. And, uh, well beyond well beyond that. <laughs> it's, it's almost as and if And this guy's spell... teaching university. Do you really want this guy teaching your kids any more than you want a child molester on the loose, right? Yeah. That's the guy teaching your kids. Just a complete brainwash and, like you said, emotional attachment. And that... Uh, that brings me to something I was talking to Mike about, and uh, I'm sure you're well versed in as well. Like the whole Challenger explosion, I think was obviously a uh, like a setup thing to bring about emotional reaction and kind of steer people off of the question of like, why aren't we going back to the moon? Like, why aren't we really exploring space travel? Because if they could fake this uh, super tragic event and death and just broadcast it to everyone, so that they just automatically. Uh, feel that sadness and like how dare you those people died and like it'll kind of steer people away from wondering about that and it'll uh justify not going back to the moon and that's what apollo 13 was about what happened was you know every time they go they make billions and billions and billions of dollars and literally once you convince somebody you're on the moon you could lower the quality and people still believe you went it's burned in them already so six months later they do apollo 12 you know we're gonna melt this cow for as much money as we can get they're going to the moon for the second time, and people are calling the networks everywhere, and they're complaining, you're interrupting reruns of I Love Lucy. We've seen this already. I mean, the same thing with us. Let's say you and I were glued to the TV six months ago watching the very first time they planted a flag on the South Pole, right? And then during this interview, you know, your wife comes in and says, hey, you want to watch them plant a flag on the South Pole for the second time? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> you know, and so, and so what, what are we going to do? The very next mission, get this, 13 is an Illuminati number, right? So the very next mission, Apollo 13, on April 13th, 
at 1313 military time has that quote <laughs> accident to allow the drama whatever whatever none of them ever left earth orbit in fact in this fake footage we uncovered apollo 10 before them allegedly orbited the moon and came back to you know uh, you know test the equipment and and while they're faking you know this one foot model they say this is the way 10 did it you know they have 10 taught him how to fake the shot of the earth pulling in space you know that nobody has left earth orbit unless they died and they covered it up there's so much radiation out there in fact one of the clips that you can see for free just go to sabrell.com click on the top left button moon man video links and one of them is something like nasa proves the moon landings are fake or something like that and it's this engineer who works at nasa kelly smith he's just you know 20-ish guy you know space is great and i love the moon landing blah 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 and they're trying to send a spacecraft to the moon again, but we have to test it first. Really? You did it six times? I mean, what more is there to test? In any case, people don't know this, but like a thousand miles up is this huge field of radiation that goes up another 30,000 miles. I mean, it's 30,000 miles thick of this deadly, deadly, deadly radiation. In fact, when the space shuttle crew got to their highest altitude, it was something like 375 miles, which would be something like, you know, 600... Uh, and 25 miles away from the beginning of it, they could close their eyes and see sparks of light from the radiation. So imagine there's a meltdown uh, that's 625 miles away from you, and when you close your eyes and turn that direction, you see fireworks on your eyes from the radiation. That's how bad it is from 625 miles away. Imagine what would happen if you were in it for an hour and a half to the moon and in it for an hour and a half back. So apparently knowing that, they're sending a spacecraft directly into the middle of it, directly to come back with two Geiger counters. You know, we need to know the radiation levels. Apparently, Apollo going to the moon six times wasn't good enough for them. So they land, I call them up, I'm a journalist. This is a non-military civilian organization, NASA. So we paid for those probes. We paid for the Geiger counters. May I please have the Geiger counter readings? You know what they said? I'm sorry, that's a classified secret. The Geiger counter readings that they just sent up that would prove you can't go to the moon are classified secret. I mean, they sent probes to the sun to measure the temperature of the sun. The temperature of the sun is not classified secret. They sent probes to Jupiter to see how much helium is in Jupiter's atmosphere. The amount of helium in Jupiter's atmosphere is not a classified secret because it's just nature, just a part of nature. So why would the amount of radiation, part of nature, and the radiation belts which surround the Earth, why is this, you know, it's like saying, I took a picture of the thermometer it says it says 82 degrees, that's classified secret. I mean, why? Well, because the radiation readings prove they didn't go, they wanted to doctor them up first and make some excuse that it's lower, blah, blah, blah. They already faked pictures. So I don't think it's a, it's a matter to lower a radiation number from 1,000 to 0.5. It's just a number, not even Photoshop. You know what I mean? There's so much evidence that we didn't go to the moon. If, it's kind of like Santa Claus, I guess, for adults. I remember, guys, I remember when I found out there was no Santa Claus. I was like the youngest person in every grade I went to because my parents either wanted to get rid of me or they thought I was, quote, gifted. So I started the first grade at five, but no public school would take me because I was too young. So the first year, till to be grandfathered in, they paid one year for me to go to this private school. And Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, we're all talking about Santa Claus and all the stories about Santa Claus and whatever. But I'm riding the bus with these you know, grown-ups, the fifth graders or sixth graders, and on the way back, they get a big kick telling all the kids, there is no Santa Claus while you're sleeping in bed. Your parents take the presents out of the closet, put them under the tree, and go back to bed. And I'm like, no, no, there's Santa Claus. I saw him in the mall. I had my picture taken with them. It's in all the books. Every book says there's a Santa Claus. I saw it on TV. And so I go home. And my parents had a living room. It looked just like the, the All in the Family. Ever see that TV show? Oh, There's yeah. like a table in the middle, mom's chair to the left, dad's chair to the right, and the TV is the center of attention. And they're watching some show. Might have been All in the Family. And uh, I go up. I go up to my dad and I say, Dad, you know, is Santa Claus real? And he says, Of course, son. You know, you know, don't bother me. We're watching a program. So I go to my mom and I say, Mom, you, you tell me the truth. It's you and me. I mean, and I remember saying it this way. I remember saying it this way as a five-year-old. I mean, really? Really? Is there really a Santa Claus? She says, yes, Bart, there's Santa Claus. Don't bother me. Watch television. 
I go back to my dad and I say it this way. Dad, I mean, really? Come on, come on, really? Is there really a Santa Claus? Yes, Bart, don't bother me again. Go back to my mom again. I mean, come on, really? You can be honest. There, it's, I don't know why I didn't believe them, but I mean, really? I mean, you could tell me the truth. Come on, really? Yes, Bart, it's real. So I go back to my dad again. I say, Dad, is there, okay, you happy? There's no Santa Claus while you're asleep. We go get the presents, we put them down. There is no Santa Claus, never will be, never was. You happy now? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I run up to my room and I cry myself to sleep, which took about five hours. I'm standing at the window, tears weeping at two, three in the morning, crying and crying and crying. There is no Santa Claus. Imagine what people would do when they find out there's no moon landing. I showed this footage, I was working at NBC News. I rushed the tape over to the news director. I said, look what I got. He watches the window shot, which you can see for free right now at sabrell.com and a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. The guy turns white, puts his hand over his mouth, collapses in his chair and says, oh my gosh, this proves beyond any doubt they didn't go to the moon. I said, yeah, well, what are we gonna do? And he thinks about it and thinks about it and thinks about it and says, I'm not gonna broadcast this. This will cause a civil war. And I will not go down in history as the man who caused the second civil war. Bart, I'm not gonna do it. And I'm like, I don't believe you. You're telling me that if we show the public how corrupt the federal government is, it'll bring down the corrupt federal government? Isn't that what it's supposed to do? Isn't that our job? That's what Kennedy said our job was, right? Mm -hmm. And then 10 years go by. Another news director I put in touch with, NBC News calls me 10 years later and says, Bart, we found your footage. We want to do a nationwide television special exposing the moon landing fraud. You're our star. They fly me to New York. They put me up in the Waldo for Storia Hotel. They pay me thousands of dollars for the exclusive rights for the footage I uncovered, which shows them faking part of the moon mission right in front of your eyes. Eight to two days into the flight with the third track of audio of the CIA. And there's Buzz Aldrin and there's you know Neil Armstrong and so forth. And they shoot the interview. I go back and I'm like, well, when's the air date? You said it was going to be here. You postponed it. You said it was going to be here. You postponed it. You said it was going to be here. Postponed it. What's going on? He says, well, we got a call from someone high up in the federal government and they insisted that we not broadcast it or else this, this, and this would happen. And we want to protect our license and we want to do this. We're going to have to cancel the program. You see, if the truth comes out, you know, whoever shot JFK is just changing the name. Whoever did 9-11 is just changing the name. This is different. This is telling someone there is no Santa Claus. After they waved their flag, they cried, they got down on their knees. Ticker tape parades, it's on a 50 cent piece, it's on a stamp, it's in the encyclopedia, medals of honor, for lying. This is your federal government. And then when it comes out, see this is why NASA's greatest fear is the Apollo 1 fire. Because as soon as this comes out, with Betty Grissom and Scott Grissom for 50, 60 years saying Apollo 1 fire is homicide and not getting justice, just like the 9-11 people 22 years later, that'll be coming out next. And then the public is gonna find out not only did they fake the moon landing with our money, they used that money to hire CIA agents to kill our neighbors who are trying to expose their crime. This is what we're paying taxes for? Who are these people? They are criminals. The federal government needs to be dissolved. Why don't we have the independent states of America? And if you want to, you know, marry a tree, go to the state where marrying a tree is legal. If you want to carry a firearm everywhere you go, go to that state. If you want to be in a state that's firearm free, go to that state. And all the states will be vying for the population for their taxes. And then you, you just kind of, you don't rewrite the Constitution, you, you reaffirm it. And then you add things to make sure this never, ever, ever happens again. And this is the last chapter, what to do about this mess. You see, the first democracy 2,500 years ago, the Greeks or whoever, their democracy lasted 500 years. I don't think we're gonna make it to 280. They, they chose their representatives by lottery. No election, no lobbying, no payback of, of you know ill-gotten gain. If, if we can be chosen at lottery to decide whether a guy goes to the electric chair or not, I think we're qualified enough to decide whether a bottle of ketchup says contains GMOs on it, which 90% of Americans wanted, and the President of the United States vetoed it. 
I thought this was a democracy. I thought 51% got their way. 90% does not get their sway in this country. Ask Ron Paul and Bernie Sanders if an honest man stands a chance. It doesn't. We have to eliminate political parties. You know, there's no party, there's just people. You vote for the person. So let's say those 435 people are chosen by lottery. You now have the Congress or Senate, and maybe just have one, make it simple. Call it Congress, call it Senate, whatever. And then after maybe six months, those people nominate among their rank and file, among the Bowen Alley managers, among the McDonald's franchise owners, among the janitors who sweep the floor, among the news reporters. They, they know who's honest, they know who's popular, they know who's capable. They nominate five people. And of those five people, you have debates. And then you narrow it down to three, you narrow it down to two, you narrow it down to one by popular vote. Now, technically, we're voting for the president, but it was done from a, from a random selection of potential candidates. That's how you have integrity. And then you do a one-term limit for everything. You can be sheriff once, mayor once, congressman once, director of sanitation once. That's it. Five years, that's it. You see, there's, all you got to do is just write some creative rules. You have a law that says any law has to be 100 words or fewer, not you know, 800 pages that no one reads. And what was some Speaker of the House's famous last words? They, I think she got it from Cap, uh, from uh, Clockwork Orange. Don't read it, sign it. She literally said out of her mouth, guys, 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 I, I know you're asking for more time to read these 17,000 pages, but you know, don't read it, sign it. You can read it later after you commit the country to whatever it is that you don't even know. So that's her advice as the leader of the House of Representatives. She said that out of her mouth. Don't read it, sign it. Just like a clockwork orange. <laughs> I mean, it's a crazy world. This is our country. Something I wanted to get into a little bit, Bart, is uh, well, kind of America itself is kind of founded on Freemasonry when you realize the founding fathers and whatnot were all pretty much Freemasons. And I know a lot of, if not all, maybe you could speak on that, of the prolific astronauts are Freemasons like Buzz Aldrin and it's not really a surprise even despite all the proof you've laid out about the moon landing being fake that if Masons are behind it like lying is kind of their profession their uh their allegiance is to uh Freemasonry so like lying and deceiving everyone else is like it kind of comes with the territory and I believe the word NASA or a variation of it might even mean to deceive in uh, Hebrew, I've heard that a couple times before. That yeah, the word NASA or NASA or a variation of it is yeah, it means deceive or to deceive. Something else like when you uh, brought up the numerology, I I really like that because when you do the deep dive, you could see the proof in the symbolism and in the numerology. Like when you know like the occultists are so obsessed with that that that's a a whole nother layer of kind of exposing what they're doing and showing that there's just a little bit too much to be coincidence when all these things are kind of connected. Well, yeah, the, the, the same, the same is true of the word Apollo. I did deep research on that. Apollo comes from Apollyon, which is Lucifer, which means yep. deceiver. They're yep. telling you the truth right out there. But, but there is one good thing about Freemasonry. I just want to give them one compliment about it. The good thing about Freemasonry is it's free. They're not charging us for it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because they charge us to fake the moon landing. They charge us for the bullets that killed Kennedy. They charge us for the explosives of 9-11, which 3,000 architects have signed a petition saying it's mechanically impossible for a pinhole airplane to go in and out of a steel grid and cause a cut. It's impossible. Just look at the Oklahoma City bombing picture. Pull it up. Half the building is blown away with explosives, and it did not come down. And do you realize... There was an interview with the engineer of the 9-11 buildings done six weeks before 9-11. I saw it. And they, and they, you know, these towers are standing there. What a great, great accomplishment, blah, blah, blah. And someone asked this, you know, kind of strange curiosity question. It's the type of question I would ask. Well, you know, you're the engineer. What would happen if, a, if an airplane hit it? He goes, nothing. You could hit it with 12 airplanes. It wouldn't matter. It'd be like throwing a pencil through a screen door. Nothing would happen. And guess where he was on 9-11? They lured him into the building so he couldn't give that testimony. Just like the inventor of the Paul <laughs> uh, Campbell uh, Robert test was killed with a, quote, respiratory illness and wouldn't give his testimony that that invention, which, uh, which they're using to claim the numbers are high, he said of his own mouth, 
it's that's not what it's designed for. If you do that, you'll get a false positive 95% of the time. Imagine he, he was alive during this little scenario of the last three years and said that over and over and over again. He won a Nobel Prize for inventing that test that they're shoving up people's noses to claim that disease is everywhere. What if he's alive saying, I'm the one who won the Nobel Prize for it. I'm the one who designed it. If you do that, you're going to have a false positive 95% of the time. If he says that while the stain's going on, that's not good. So he coincidentally died and get their shrewdness or arrogance. He dies of a respiratory. They infected him, you say, took him down. And other things like that go on all the time, all the time, all the time. And no one is doing anything about it because they spend as much time watching television as they do at work. Americans spend 40 hours a week watching television and 40 hours a week at work. And then they have to sleep and get their dry cleaning and spend a few minutes with their kids. How is their time to change the world? There isn't any left over, right? That they're distracting us constantly. That's their intent. Yeah, you get that answer a lot of, uh, so even if this is true, what are we going to do about it? And uh, someone like yourself who's been at this for a very long time trying to get it out there and expose it to people. And even sometimes you give them enough proof and they still won't uh, change their mind. Like you said, the well, guy there even is, with the confession. There is so, Mike and Tom, there is a 100% foolproof way the truth can come out. I, I guarantee it, 100%, it will happen if you do this. Want me to tell you? Yeah. Everyone listening to my voice, you guys included, and me as well, when we finish listening to this, we get down on our knees and we beg God to rebuke these murderers who are killing us and robbing us and poisoning us. We beg God for his divine intervention, because that is the only way this is going to come out, because they're too good. They just keep getting away with more and more robbery, murder, and deception. Only divine intervention will save us. That's it. That's all that's left. Everybody listening to my voice when it's over, let's pray. God, I beg you, for the sake of mankind, who has cancer and is walking around, doesn't even know it. Let the truth come out. Let our hearts be crushed for our own benefit. If we keep painting over mold, guess what's going to happen? If we have gangrene on our arm and don't cut it off, guess what's going to happen? He hates his stuff. I believe he let it happen as a lesson. The film, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, opens up with the Tower of Babel. And the scriptures say the reason why they built it, the tallest building, which is still going on today, it had nothing that's changed, was to boast. It says it was done to show off, never finished. And then thousands of years later, mankind and their great genius builds the largest machine of the human hand, the Titanic. And they have the audacity to put on a poster for ticket sales, the ship that God himself cannot sink. Just like the Tower of Babel, never finished. Just like the Titanic, never made one voyage. And get this, Richard Nixon is talking to, allegedly, men on the moon when they're really, you know, pre-recorded at Cannon Air Force Base a year earlier. And he says, putting a man on the moon when he knew it was fake is the greatest event second only to God making the universe. I think that rebuke is going to come. Logically, I'd say it's never going to come out. Spiritually, I'd say yes. Now, the interesting thing is why the delay? You know what I mean? Everyone saw the Tower of Babel, you know, abandoned. And Jesus even says if you start to build a tower and don't finish it, everyone says you're a fool. Everyone saw the boast, the ship that God himself could not sink, and everyone saw it go down. This hasn't been exposed yet. Why the delay? My guess as to why, imagine a couple madly in love. It's their wedding day. They've been married six weeks. One of them goes to a convention, gets wildly drunk, and has a one-night stand. They come back from the convention. They could either tell their spouse now, or what if they tell them on their 50th anniversary? Imagine they tell them on their 50th anniversary. They're old, they're toasting, they've been loving and hugging and having grandchildren and walks in the park and kissing and hugging. Everyone says they're the best couple. And then finally, the spouse who did it says, I just, I just can't keep this in any longer. 50 years ago, six weeks after we got married, I went to a convention, I got insanely drunk, and next thing I know, I'm waking up in the bed next to a person who I obviously had sex with. There's a condom here and blah, blah, blah. Please forgive me. Had they said that six weeks into their marriage, the day after it happened, maybe divorce, maybe not. 
how does that feel to the person's heart on the receiving end of that knowledge after 50 years of thinking and being wrong that your spouse has always been faithful to you? I think that's why God is delaying it. So the shock will be greater so that it will crush us. And he will say, see how far you have fallen? See, you think crime is bad? You think government corruption is bad? No, no, no. Let me show you how bad it is. They told this lie, which wasn't even necessary. It wasn't wartime, faking you know tanks that are non-existent. They just did it because they could do it. Why did Clinton, when he was asked to have an affair, he says, because I could have got away with it, because I could. They did it because they could just do it. And they think they're better than us. And then they use that money that we gave them to go to the moon to not only fake it, but to murder Virgil Grissom, to widow Betty Grissom, to orphan Scott Grissom, and many, many, many other people, including the man who murdered a coworker at Cannon Air Force Base to cover up the moon landing fraud and how many in between. God, I believe, wants to shock us. There is no Santa Claus. There is no moon. <laughs> no, there's not. Well, Bart, I, uh, I want to thank you. This was amazing. And why don't you uh, tell everybody in case they, they didn't get your website? I, I have two final pitches. Okay. okay? I, spent my, I spent my life risking my life for this stuff because I think it's important. If you want to contribute, read the book. People seem to like it. It's at sabrell.com. S as in Sam, I, B as in boy, R-E-L, sabrell.com. It's an audio, which I read myself. Kindle and print, and you get free interactive clips and so forth. That's the first thing, sabrell.com. And then the second thing is, when the show is over, me, you guys included, get down on our knees, and we beg God specifically for the moon landing fraud to come out in front of all the world, to put not the United States in their, in their place, not the deep state in their place, mankind in their place. This is what you guys, this is where you guys are. You think you're some intelligent beauty contest winner? No, you are a dirty scoundrel. Get your act together before I come back and make judgment begin. Pray that that happens. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you for all your work. And like you said, doing it your whole life, risking your life because it is important. And uh, I really like the spiritual spin you put on it all because this all does seem like a pretty nefarious lie and thing that needs to be exposed. So yeah, thank you for your time. No yeah. problem. And like I said, you know, I just, I don't know what it is. It's the last five, four or five interviews, and this one's even more out of my heart than the previous one. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. And I'm not even sad. Enough is enough. I mean, come on. I mean, I finally stopped drinking from divine intervention. I prayed for God to take my desire away. But I didn't do that until enough is enough. Throwing up 200 times. Enough is enough. Admit the truth, and let's rebuild and move on. Absolutely. I couldn't think of a, a better way to close it. I, I just want to let you know that we do plan on uh, doing a visual podcast as well sometime maybe around March of next year. And we would absolutely be honored if you would like to come back. Your videos lend a lot to what you're saying. So uh, maybe that's something we could discuss further on down the line. But thank you so much. You got it out of me because I think at this point the best interview I've ever given. Well, I appreciate that. I, I really do. We're, we are honored. Definitely. And likewise, I hope the podcast does well for you. Thank you Thank so much, you. brother. Okay, so that was genuine raw motion, right? Towards the end there, that like the last, what, 10 minutes maybe? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, definitely a heartfelt conversation. I love everything he had to say about that. And uh, it's an honor for him to say what he said about uh, this interview. Right? Yeah, one of his best. He said it was his best. So, yeah, I mean, that's for us just, you know, what, for it being the... What is it, uh, third session? That's pretty awesome. I would say we're off to a great start with uh, our first three. If you're listening to this and some of the other ones, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, follow us on uh, social media, be ready for the future episodes. Yeah, we have some things planned. Some other podcasters that are pretty prevalent in this genre or sub-genre, right? We're going to have uh, the host of My Family Thinks I'm Crazy. Yep, Mystic Mark, and then Jonathan and Jacob from Cult of Conspiracy. I've been on both of their shows. Those guys are great. Listen to their shows a lot, and uh, they're definitely going to bring some good knowledge, too, when we get them on here next. Look for those guys in the next few episodes, 
as well as maybe uh, Tom and I making some appearances or Tom making reappearances and me making my first appearance on some of their shows as well. Yeah, this one was fun. This one was entertaining. Man, he knows a lot about the moon landing. Full disclosure, I didn't think we landed on the moon and didn't before we talked to him, right? No, same. But even if I did, it would be hard at the end of that conversation for me to think that we still did because he just laid it all out. It's like... And he really didn't even touch on some of the stuff. Yeah, I feel like we could have let him go even more. Could have gone all night with it. And he laid out what he thought was his uh, main points. But the uh, numerology and all the other stuff, I know he can go much deeper. And hopefully in the future, we'll get that. But uh, yeah, if there's anyone out there that uh, was unsure about the moon landing, hopefully uh, we just gave Bart the platform to open a few minds for that. Yeah, and the numerology, I think, will, will uh, when we do get into the video, I think that will be, uh, that will lend itself, the video medium is going to lend itself to a better, for the numerology, you know, it's going to be a little bit easier, I think, to, to get across in that way. So look for that. We're definitely going to try to have him back on, and uh, well, I guess that's it then, right? Yeah. We'll follow us, like you said, do all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, go eat a cheeseburger. We'll see you in the next one. The greatest prison that people live in is the fear of what other people think. What happened to me as a result of all the ridicule I went through is that I stepped out of the fear of what other people thought.